I'm Jennifer Fiebig from Pasadena City College. Did you know that less than 10% of all California community colleges have a transfer degree in Global Studies? Even though this degree is relatively new, more than likely your campus is already offering key required courses. The benefits of creating this program are twofold. You're helping students transfer and faculty are contributing to multiple programs. In my talk, you'll learn the core requirements of the Global Studies program as outlined by the Chancellor's Office. You'll understand key terms or components to include when writing the narrative for your college catalog. And lastly, I'll share how this project has evolved on my campus. I know that right now you're probably listing all of the roadblocks that you'd likely face if you were to take on yet another task. But I'm here to tell you that this project is manageable. My goal is that you'll be able to walk away from my talk understanding what you'll need to do, and hopefully realizing that the process is not as daunting as it might seem. What if I told you that only 9% of American college students study a modern foreign language? At a time when our college students are becoming less culturally competent, it is a paramount and urgent role of educators to encourage students to be more knowledgeable of the diverse world we live in. Today, more than ever, our students need to be equipped with the critical thinking, communication, socio-emotional, and language skills to work collaboratively with people in the United States and all over the world. My name is Dave Dillon. I am counseling faculty and a professor at Grossmont College. My epic project is to curate a textbook chapter on cultural competency. Please join me to learn how the chapter content will be free for students and included in an OER college success textbook. Hi, I'm Don Yuparetta, and economics is my passion. I rely on it to make the world a better place, just like many of us. Well, that's a goal, it doesn't always work out that way. So my research topic is to see why some countries have different results when they use the same economic policy as other countries. My research has taken me as far as Africa, Latin America, and of course, Europe. So join me at my presentation at Stanford. Thank you for your time, and look forward to seeing you there. How close does someone have to be for you to feel uncomfortable? What if they started touching you? Well, all these are cultural norms in the Brazilian culture, for friends and even acquaintances. Hello, my name is Philip Tran, and I'm with the San Jose City College, Evergreen Valley College School District. This example highlights differences in business cultures around the world. For my EPIC project, I internationalized my course curriculum by editing an existing cross-cultural role-playing game to have students experience the importance of cultural awareness in the business world. The game involves dividing the students in the classroom into two separate groups. Each group is instructed to follow specific cultural norms not known to the other group as they interact with each other. The result is mild chaos, giggling, confusion, and a lot of learning. Students walk away from the game with an increased awareness that our cultural norms may not be understood or even well received from someone from a different culture. If you'd like to know how this can be implemented in your classroom, come join me May 18th at the EPIC Symposium at Stanford University. I'm here at the Golden Gate Seminary and I want to talk to you about cross-cultural negotiation. This beautiful site was one of the proposed places to build the United Nations headquarters and although it was not picked, I thought it was a good place to bring up this topic. I'm Nancy Willett, and I teach business law and communication at the College of the Marin right down the road. Like you, I encourage my students to learn key skills to succeed in their coursework and careers. I would assert that negotiation, particularly with a geocentric mindset, is a highly desired top 10 soft skill, especially for business and economic students who will be working on diverse teams and globally. Come to my EPIC presentation if you want to learn how to sharpen your students' cross-cultural negotiation skills by using role play and simulation to practice such things as active listening, trust building, and leadership style. So when your students get out in the real world and come to the table with their business counterparts from Brazil or China, you can rest assured that they have what it takes to get to win-win. So join me, please. Thanks. I came to the United States on a short study abroad trip. That experience truly transformed my life. Hi, I'm Chibusa Katoku. I direct the international programs at Mission College. My Stanford Fellowship project is to create an outbound study abroad program through our existing global partnership. 
I developed the STEM focused program to take students and faculty members to host the world in Mark. Our program started off with the tour of the incredible STEM facilities and science classes, our field trips to the Wind Turbine Testing Center and the University of Aarhus were unforgettable. Our students immersed themselves in the Danish culture. They stayed with host families and made lifetime friends. At the end of the trip, I teared up when my students described their experience to be life-changing. Made me feel like I was 16 again. Please come to my session to learn how I was able to offer this transformational global experience to Mission College students. Who do we help? When do we help? How do we help? Hello, my name is Irene Young and I teach psychology at St. Phillips College in San Antonio, Texas. For my EPIC project, students worked in teams to examine cross-cultural altruism and social cognition. All of us can identify ways in which we have assisted others, ranging from general acts of kindness to personal sacrifice. Now prepare to expand your students' scope of knowledge about how various cultures define, interpret, and express altruism. Regardless of the academic aspiration, your students, like my students, can explore cross-cultural altruism from an international perspective. They can discover continents, countries, and cultures. They can engage in individual behaviors that promote altruism and altruistic service learning opportunities. So, invigorate your students' intellectual innovations through cross-cultural altruism and social cognition. When we started our year's Epic Fellows, Mitchell Stevens, Stanford Professor of Education, asked us a very good question. What drew us to global studies? And thinking about it, I remember that during my years in high school and college, I spent hours looking through a set of pictures based on an exhibit called The Family of Man, which illustrates clearly our connections to one another. Images reflect and shape our worldview. Iconic images can represent a significant event and evoke emotions. Some of you may be familiar with these images. Today, images are literally streaming all around us. Hello, my name is Mary Conroy and I teach global studies at San Jose City College. My EPIC project focuses on how we can use the power of images to introduce and engage students in learning about contemporary global issues and to encourage students to examine their own ideas and perceptions about such topics as immigration, poverty, and global health. I hope you will join me today to explore images, activities, and student reactions to this approach. In 2017, the Institute for the Future named cross-cultural competency as one of the top most important skills for the future workforce. How can we, as community college educators, expose our students to diverse ideas and values? Hi, I'm Marina Broder, and I teach English as a second language at Mission College in Santa Clara, California. And I believe that we have an untapped resource on our campus for cultural expertise. I'm talking about adult learners of English. My ESL students bring the world into my classroom. The goal of my Stanford project was to explore ways for my students to build closer connections, challenge stereotypes, and infuse the, co the community college campus with global perspectives. In my presentation, I will share how with the use of maps, images, photos, storytelling, my ESL students were able to deepen their cross-cultural communication skills and develop an intercultural mindset. Join me for an interactive, inquiry-based discussion on effective strategies that build community and unite us in our humanity. Hello, my name is Andrew Hill, and I teach philosophy and ethics at St. Philip's College in San Antonio, Texas. My project is called Global Humanitarian Values in the Classroom. And in this, I've discussed how I've incorporated into my classes a program called Exploring Humanitarian Law, but it's put out by the International Committee of the Red Cross and is currently being used in 40 different countries around the world. This program explores the global humanitarian values that underscore the Law of Armed Conflict, or IHL, International Humanitarian Law. Come to the discussion, learn how you can also 
explore the global humanitarian values under IHL to advance student learning in your classroom.